Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23. Well-known, well-loved psalm. Do you know it? You can open your Bibles and find it. Psalm of David. Many of us have memorized it from childhood and loved it, and it's comforting to us. And we can. We can look at things like that that's meant for others, but we can take it and enjoy it and be blessed by it ourselves, right? But this psalm was written... For a time yet to come in our history, yes. And maybe, uh, as I said before, it can bless us all. It can bless everyone and every time, time they find themselves in life. But I'd like to show you what it meant personally for King David. Remember David, Bethlehem shepherd boy who became king of Israel and Judah? Yeah, that's the one who wrote it. He was a singer of songs and a... Um, writer of songs, um, that's what he did. And we have many of his psalms in the Bible, right? He became king. God anointed him and planned for him to be. And remember, too, he was the one who slew Goliath, the giant. Yeah. Wonderful stories about King David. But this was a psalm he wrote. And being a shepherd in his youth, the idea of shepherding was very important to him. And by the way, all through the Bible from beginning to end, the, the theme of God as our shepherd is, is there all the way through, showing us that. I'd like to read you a couple of scriptures on this idea. Psalm 95. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep under his care. And Psalm 100, know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are the people of his, no, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yeah. And then it goes into the New Testament, and Jesus himself says, I am the good shepherd. And then he goes on to say, who lays down his life for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. All the way through scripture, we can see God's shepherding. And so what he's saying to, through King David, this Psalm 23, is very important for Jews all through history, like I've said, and all of us Gentiles as well. But what he's doing is he's speaking about a time yet to come for Israel. Let me go through them with you a little bit and see if you can see what I'm talking about. Let's start again. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I shall not want. When my little granddaughter, Grace, was four or five, she said, she was memorizing this verse. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not forget. Yes. <laughs> and I told her, yes, your version is excellent. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not forget. Uh, David here is saying, I shall not want. That means I will have my needs met in a difficult time that's coming upon the Jewish nation. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. What are green pastures? It means they've been well watered. The crops are growing. There's food to eat. And if they're lying down, it's a peaceful place. He leads me beside still waters. 
still waters is a very interesting thought. It's not a raging stream that might uh, frighten the animal or um, cause them injury. Quiet water so they can drink. So if you see it as, as Israel is a sheep and he is going to lead them to quiet waters. And I love it that um, it says uh, he will bring them to drink from uh, fountains of living water. And living water is water that's never been touched by man. They understand that term. It's never been touched by man. It's God given from the heavens. Good, good things are coming. And all these things are, they are to know and to remember in a time of terrible trouble. Remember these things. These are the things God will do for them when the world is being shaken and rocked and rolled and, and uh, uh, full of trials and tribulation. He will uh, give them that place of still waters. What is that for us spiritually? Deep within our hearts, our spirits, isn't it? Yes. And he restores my soul is the next line. Our soul is, a, we have we have mind, will, and emotions in our soul. And it is where we think. That's where we carry memories. And he's saying, God is saying to Israel through King David, I will restore your soul. He says to all of us through this psalm, I will restore your soul. Come unto me. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. If, if you go to Israel, you can see the paths where the sheep have continuously walked. And you look at the mountain ranges and you can actually see the paths they've taken. They're there. There's no, there's no foliage growing on any of them. The paths of righteousness. And isn't that what God is after for them and for us? Righteousness? Remember, uh, Abraham believed in the one God. He, he threw away all the pagan gods and he chose to believe in one God, Jehovah God. And God counted that to him as righteousness. So he is saying to the Jews, yet to come. I will lead you in that path. Go down that path where the sheep went and find his righteousness. That's what he's after. He, he accredited faith in God. So what he's asking us, asking them for, I will show you the way to faith in me. Yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil. For my rod and my staff are with you. The valley of the shadow of death is in the Hinnom, is called at the Hinnom Valley at uh, Jerusalem, where the gods of Moloch threw the babies, where they were burnt alive, and a human sacrifice was taking place. The place of death, the uh, shadow of death is over that place where so many uh, have died. And uh, the valley um, of Jehoshaphat, the whole valley of the Kidron is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. It's a deep ravine there. There's another uh, <laughs> deep ravine and it's, um, it comes from Jericho and it's called Wadi Kelt. And so it uh, translates out valley, the shadow of death, Wadi Kelt. It's a long valley, and, and if you were a sheep, there would be scary things in there. Wouldn't there be wolves and animals that would attack you, uh, men who wanted to steal and take you away from the shepherd? And the shepherd had to be on, on careful duty, didn't he, to watch over his sheep as he went through this, these ravines. And so the Lord is saying, I will walk through these scary valleys that may lead to death. And then he says to you, fear no evil. And then he says this amazing thing, my rod and my staff comfort you. The rod and the staff are what the shepherd carried and used to uh, get his sheep back on the path. <laughs> Those are there. God is saying, even though you face death, 
from the enemy, from illness, or from demonic power. Israel, you'll have every horrible demon raging against you soon. And he says to you, as you walk through the valley of this shadow of death, I will be with you and I will comfort you. Wow. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. When you sit down to table, seems like all would be well, right? God is saying, I will feed you with your enemies surrounding you. Satan's mad. He's going to be really mad at Israel, especially as she finds her Messiah. Really mad. Yes. So the enemy will be raging. And the Lord says, I will feed you. He's going to make the desert blossom. The Judean desert is still very, very empty. <laughs> it will blossom and grow and they will be fed by him. Maybe even by manna. Yeah. In the presence of your enemies, I will feed you. Then he goes on to say, you anoint my head with oil. Do you know about anointing oil? It's put on and then people pray over people with it. The anointing oil was put on Aaron as, as an anointing for him to become the first uh, priest. But on the sheep, it was put as a protector against parasites and bugs uh, flies, things that would bother the animal. That was soothing to the sheep. The anointing of the Holy God, the Holy Spirit, is soothing to our soul and our spirit and even our bodies. Yes. He anoints us with his presence. Yes. My cup runneth over. You know what a full cup is, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's so full it's running over you are blessed he's saying I, that means I am going to bless you I have blessed you I'm going to bless you so much that you're going, it's going to be an overflowing blessing oh wow you will no longer have wants remember we started out with the Lord is my shepherd you shall not want I shall not want when your cup runs over, you have no wants. This is what's going to happen. This is what will be. And it amazingly switches now from the sheep thought. And it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's one of the I am's that Jesus said, I am the sheep, I am the door, the door to the sheepfold. So this too could be the sheep. The sheep are entered into the fold, it's not a house, but he's the doorway, he protects them. But this is the house of, of the temple of God. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As long as the temple stands all through the millennial reign, the Jews will dwell in that house forever. We Gentiles who have come to faith and come alongside Israel, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as it stands clear through the millennial reign. So surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. Yes. Beautiful song, especially for Israel future especially for Americans as we go through trials, especially for the world as they go through trials, especially for you growing up in life. I, every day is a good day to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not forget. <laughs>